guys welcome back to laura emmy tv world some persons do not believe in the existence of black magic voodoo or even ritual killing but today we we'll bring to you the true life story of the dreaded okija shirenan evil forest located in okija community of anambra state in the southeastern part of nigeria a shrine which played several roles from from settling of dispute financial agreement and oath taking and even had top nigerian politicians going there to swear oath of allegiance to their political godfathers so Let's begin. Hi guys, welcome back to Leroy Me TV. Today we'll bring to you the interesting but shocking story of the dreaded Okija Shrines. Located in the sleepy community of Okija, a small town in Ihiala local government area, where all sorts of barbaric arts and ritual killings took place before it was busted by men of the Nigerian police force in August 2004. We shall be bringing to you all you need to know about the shrines, including how they came about and the fact that the Okija Shrines consist of four different shrines spread across across various parts of the Okija community. One in the center of the community while others are in the forest and they include Ulashi, Ogugu Aku, Ogugu Isuala and Ogugu Umili. Generally, the four shrines are described as Alusi Okija. But before we go into the shocking and scary story of these dreaded shrines, if you're new to our channel, you're highly welcome to Laura Emmy TV and please do want to hit on that subscribe button and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so you can always stay notified and updated whenever we upload a new video. We upload very interesting content every day. Without further ado, let's jump right into our story. The Ogugu Aku was the daughter of Ezinokbodu, who was married to Ubahu Ezike. She was into farming in those days, but some thieves were constantly stealing cassava from her farmland. And when she reported the matter, the villagers gave her chance to keep inside the farmland, and the chance started killing all the thieves who were still going to steal her cassava crops. It was when she died that her cassava farmland was renamed Ogugu Aku Shrine, and priests started worshipping it. Apart from those cassava thieves who were killed those days, the shrine was modified in such a way that when two or more persons have financial disagreements among themselves, the aggrieved one would consult the shrine, which would in turn send its messenger to summon the other party or parties to appear before it for the settlement of the dispute. Like in the court of law, chief priest of the shrine would mediate into the matter hear from both parties, give a verdict and mandate the defaulter to bring the money in dispute to the shrine from where the rightful owner would be refunded. On the other hand, if the defaulter fails to bring the money to the shrine on the agreed date, the shrine would strike him or her dead and once he or she dies, the remains will be brought to the shrine by the messengers and they will lie there without burial which was why so many corpses were found inside the shrine in 2004 when the police dumped there. The sleepy community of Okija in Ihala local government area of Anambra state came into limelight in August 2004 when the media both prints and electronics became a watch with the gory stories of killings, rituals, oath taking and brutality inside the Ogugo Aku Shrine, one of the shrines in the area. Before then, Ogugo Aku was just like any other shrines in Ibula, which served as chicks against impunity and mass inhumanity to man. For instance, people who were aggrieved over the manner they were treated in business deals, land disputes amongst other issues took solace in Ogugo Shrine, which they believed was capable of delivering justice in favor of the downtrodden. The existence of Ogugo Akbu and others like Ogugo Isola, Ogugo Mali, amongst others never affected the spread of Christianity as Okija, which had produced over 30 Catholic and Anglican priests with about 10 parishes and 3 archdeaconries and host the country's first private faith-based university. The Manduna University is one of the fastest developing communities in Anambra State. It remains so until the emergence of the present democratic dispensation when politicians began to patronize the shrine during which the so-called political godfathers dragged their political office seekers to the shrine to swear oath of allegiance to them if elected into their aspired offices. 
in the beginning the priests of the shrine were very old people who occupied the position because the lots fell on them they were also not demanding money before administering the oath although visitors could show appreciation if they wished indeed it was the visit of former Anambra governor Dr. Chris Ngige to Okija Shrine to swear an oath that brought the shrine into popularity. Caged by his political godfathers, Dr. Ngige was reportedly dragged to Okija Shrine to swear an oath of allegiance to his political godfathers to keep his side of agreement to them on winning the Anambra State gubernatorial election. Ngige in an interview shared his bitter experience and I quote I was a foundation member of the PDP. I was nominated to be a minister by Dr. Alex Ekweme, but Obasanjo refused because they fought a bitter primary in Jaws and I was in Ekweme's car. So I was blacklisted. I was the assistant national secretary of the party before I came back to contest the primaries for Senate in 2002-2003 election. Then, I was begged by Chief Audu Ogbe and others in the National Working Committee. Even the Ubas came to beg me as a last resort. Before then, members of the Beta Anambra movement, led by Ben Akwabweze, Ben Okoye, and Osbed Ajago from Lagos, had screened people and rated me first from their interview and CV evaluation. That they were my benefactors was because it was when they were begging me that I came in to run. I gave conditions for going to run and the major condition was that I should be able to run the place unfettered and give good governance to my people in Anambra State. They were the people who breached the agreement by asking me to sign money for them, by asking me to allow them to appoint all the commissioners, special assistants, aide de camp, chief security officer and personal assistants. We had no such agreement. The breach that agreement so i said okay if you breach the agreement then there is no agreement anymore on the other hand they noticed some resentment from me that showed that i was no longer happy with the journey they said they needed loyalty so one of them suggested it and they now formed themselves into a cabal one night they said if you don't go with us to okija shrine we will shoot you it's only a living general that can tell the history of a war. If I was shot dead, the story could have been distorted. I have to be alive to be telling you this story. I asked them, what should I do? They said, let us go to Okija Shrine. And I said, okay, let's go. I took my Bible with me and followed them. When we got there, I noticed they did not have guns. Then I said, I was not going in. One of them, one of them said, he could swear for me. I said, go ahead. So he did it for me, but I did not believe in what they were doing because I am a staunch Catholic. I am a knight of the Catholic Church. So I never listened to what they were saying. They were just following the they were just fooling themselves. Well, these were the words of Dr. Chris Ngige. The Okija incident was one of the issues that Ngige battled as a governor, eventually leading to him being removed as the governor of Anambra State by his very strong and well-connected political godfathers after he went against their agreements. Beside Dr. Ngige, other politicians also visited the shrine where they swore oath of allegiance to their political godfathers. According to a native of Ubahuezike, one of the 30 villages in Okija where the shrine is located, it was common to see coastal buses filled with politicians driving into the area at the dead of the night to swear an oath. There was also a story that those who were taken to the shrine for the oath-taking ceremony were not told their mission until they saw themselves at the shrine, at which time it was virtually impossible for them to back out. As this happened, most natives of other 29 villages in the town were not aware of the happening at Ogugu Shrine such that it was indeed a strange story to them when the media started reporting developments in the shrine. As time went on, many young men from Ubuahie Zike village, who were naturally Ogugu priests by virtue of their place of birth, decided to exploit it and turned it into business-making venture. These young men, most of who were trading in Lagos and other cities, but were finding life difficult, returned home and modernized the operations of Ogugu deity. 
they were to be joined later by some educated people in the area who introduced reforms into the Ogugu shrine. It was this youth that introduced a register of those that patronized Ogugu shrine and thereafter began to charge money from those who patronized the shrine. Later, they introduced a system whereby Ogugu agent could travel to any part of the country to deliver summons to those sued at Ogugu shrine and such people were given a date to appear before the shrine in person or be prepared for the dead consequences. As Ogugu shrine became more popular, the young priest engaged the services of commercial motorcycle operators who served as their agents, the Okada riders as they are fondly called, who normally use the famous Okija Junction as their base would readily volunteer to take anybody visiting the shrine to his preferred client and by the time they would have completed the about 15 minutes ride, the Okada rider would have convinced the visitor on the most powerful priest to visit. That was why the commercial motorcyclist operators would do anything possible to ensure that they were the ones to carry first-time visitors to a priest of Ogugu shrine, as he is also assured of a commission from the amount paid by the visitor. It was not clear at what point the operators of the shrine began to demand for the corpses of those allegedly killed by Ogugu, but it became a common knowledge that once somebody suspected to have been killed by Ogugu was buried in his compound, the priest of the deity would go to demand for the corpse the same day it was buried and the body would be exhumed and taken to the Ogugu forest and kept there forever. The frightening sight is usually shown to those who appear before the deity after they were summoned and this further instills more fear on such people with the result that they would do the bidding of the priest to stay alive. With the soaring popularity of Ogugu Aku, the young men who became full-time priests suddenly had their lifestyle changed as they began to acquire expensive cars and started building mansions in the area. Then, the bubble burst as infighting began amongst them, leading to the people exposing one another on the level of their involvement in what was beginning to dawn on outsiders that it was indeed business and nothing more. In August 2004, a petition was written to the then Inspector General of Police, Mr. Tafa Balogun, over the happenings at Okija and the IGP ordered the then State Police Commissioner, Mr. Felix Oguadu, to investigate the matter. The disagreement among the operators later led to the arrest of two chief priests and 30 other persons suspected to be agents of Ogugu Shrine by the police who were taken to Abuja for questioning. The police also found 10 registers containing names of prominent politicians, businessmen, apprentices, amongst others, from most parts of Igbolan and beyond, though the identities of those whose names were in the register had not been made public till date.